They have distinguished themselves as the best. Teams who have transcended mere championships and turned them into dynasties. The Lombardi Packers, five-time NFL champions, including Super Bowls one and two. The Miami Dolphins, a team that achieved perfection and back-to-back -back Super Bowl titles. The Pittsburgh Steelers, authors of NFL history, accumulating four Lombardi trophies. Add to that short list of elite, the San Francisco 49ers, the undeniable force of the 80s. The four-time champions punctuated the decade with the most devastating performance in Super Bowl annals and immediately placed themselves in a position to write even more history of their own. In 1990, the 49ers are on the brink of football immortality, undefeated and undaunted in defense of their title. To a man, their mission is a third straight Super Bowl championship. The summit is in their sights. Francisco 49ers are on the verge of rewriting yet another chapter in the NFL record book, including playoff games they've won 16 straight. A victory tonight would equal the Raiders' streak of the 70s and leave them one shy of the best ever in professional football. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mike Patrick, and it's great to be back with you for our fourth year of NFL coverage on ESPN. And what a way to start with the 49ers, a team trying to become the first to win three straight Super Bowls. As always, it's my pleasure to be working with Joe Theismann. And Joe, even though they're 8-0, and the 49ers are not doing some of the things they used to do as well. There's a lot of grumblings in San Francisco about the running game specifically. And when you take a real close look at it, Joe Montana has the longest run from scrimmage, 20 yards. Last week against the Packers, they tried to run the ball 12 times on first down, gained a total of 13 yards. Roger Craig didn't play much last week because it was too cold. It's much warmer tonight. Look for the 49ers to come out trying to pound the Cowboy defense. Last year, the Dallas defense and offense simply awful. They won a single game. This year, they've won three. It's still not great, but obviously they're a better football team. It's a much better progress than Jimmy Johnson had expected. Now, here's a guy last year who stood on the sidelines and watched his football team go out and try not to win football games, but to play respectably. This year, he's upgraded the talent tremendously. He's given himself a chance to go out on the football field and at least put some players out there that he feels like complete, compete. Earlier this week, he told me, he said, now I finally have a chance. When I talk to my team, I tell them we do have a chance to win. And there he is, Jimmy Johnson, his two-year record, 4-21, and 21, almost like he took over an expansion team here in Dallas. And almost a mirror image on the other sideline. George Seifert with a 25-2 and two record wins the Super Bowl in his first year as the coach. Dallas won the toss. They'll receive. Mike Kofer will do the duties. And that's James Dixon out of Houston. He and Alexander Wright are deep to receive for the Dallas Cowboys and you can expect them to play it close to the best tonight. Maybe a couple of trick plays but they're not going to throw the ball 50 times. I wouldn't think so. I mean you just don't want to put yourself in that kind of trouble against the team that's been the best and, and looks like it's on its way to continuing to be the best. Sellout crowd of more than 62,000. Back to back sellouts. That's the first time that has happened here in Dallas since 1986. So the fans are coming back after a couple of wins, and we are ready to go. Dixon at the five. Across the 20 to about the 23-yard line, there is a flag down, and it is going to be Dallas offsides. By about seven yards, David Howard just ran up 
and hit somebody long before the kicker ever got to the ball. You could see him doing it, and you wonder what happened. As soon as Kofer started to approach the kick, he took off and headed for a 49er. Watch right side of your screen coming from the number uh, 50. Here he comes. Kofer's moving. He's moving. Now, you know, when a defensive coach or a special team coach... The receiving team was off time. Penalty refused. First down. When a coach stresses go after somebody, I think he means go after somebody after the ball is kicked. Yeah, after, after the game starts. After the game starts. So Dallas will take over just shy of its own 25-yard line. And there's Troy Aikman out of UCLA in his second year. The deep man in the backfield, Emmett Smith, the rookie from Florida. A.G., the man in motion. Smith on the toss, cuts it inside. 40. Brought down at the 47-yard line. Daryl Pollard saved the touchdown. A gain of 23. The right side of the offensive line, Nate Newton, the big tackle, gets out. Novacek, the tight end. They do a good job. Quick support by Waymer. Agee's come on real strong. Finally getting a chance to play good block. Emmett Smith moving up. Big, big run. Got to be careful to let a young football team get too excited early. Smith averaging three and a half yards a carry coming into this game. Delay to Smith. Not much running room this time. Got back to the line of scrimmage. Now second effort. We'll get him up to the 50. And now for tonight's diehard starting lineups. Troy Aikman at quarterback. He has all the tools, size, arm, mobility, but he's still learning and needs more talent around him to prosper. Tight end Jay Novacek has already broken his career high for receptions. He leads all NFL tight ends with 39 catches. And up front, Nate Newton is having his best year. Two weeks ago, he held Reggie White to one tackle and no sacks. Second down, call it seven for Dallas from midfield. And this is what they want tonight, ball control. Aikman will scramble. Has five and slides to the 45, a couple of yards shy of the first down. At 49ers, defense has Michael Carter on the nose. Coming off foot surgery, he's not quite back to the form that earned him three Pro Bowls. Charles Haley is having a great year. He's tied for the team lead in tackles and until this afternoon led the league in sacks with 10. At age 31, Ronnie Lott still has it. Maybe a step slower, but he still makes the big plays and the punishing hits. Third and three from the San Francisco 46. This is what Dallas wants to do. Keep the ball and move it. Aikman, three-step drop, floats it way over the intended receiver, Michael Irvin, who is back making his first start in over a year when he was injured, and Carter was putting the pressure on. A lot of Carter. Michael Carter, 6'2", 285, just penetrates right up the middle. Aikman looked a little tentative. And, you know, this is his first game against the, the 49ers. I talked to him on the field before, and he was real excited, not to mention nervous. Saxon will punt. Don Griffin is deep to receive. Normally you would see Taylor back there, but he's a little banged up. Saxon with an excellent record of kicking the ball out of bounds in Saxon. Very high. Fair catch by Griffin, makes it at the 13. So once again, Saxon does his job. A 32-yard punt, but well inside the 20-yard line. No score, 12-25 to go. First quarter from Dallas. ESPN Sunday Night NFL is brought to you by Cadillac and your local Cadillac dealer. Discover why the only way to travel is Cadillac style by AT&T, the right choice. And by Hewlett Packard Laser Jet Printers. They'll get you noticed. The 49ers with their first possession starting at their own 13-yard line. And Craig fumbles. And it looks like Dallas has it inside the 10. They do.
Roger Craig was drilled by Jimmy Jones. He never had a chance. The philosophy of Jimmy Johnson and his defensive coaches is to get penetration by the four men up front. Here you see him come up, right side of your screen. Look at the penetration. That's what the defensive line is supposed to do. That's what happened. Get the big penetration by Jimmy Jones, forcing the fumble. Roger barely gets a chance to have his hands on the ball and make a move, and Jimmy Jones is right in his face. Lockhart with the recovery, and Dallas sets up shop at the 49er eight. A.G., the fullback, gets to about the six. A.G., quite a story. This is his third year in the league. In two years, he had two carries and three catches. That's in two years. He has been used extensively on this ball club and put Alonzo Highsmith on the bench. Yeah, but I'll tell you, he's hung around with some class people. Yes, I mean, at Auburn, has. he had Bo Jackson, and in Kansas City, he worked in front of Christian Okoye. So, I mean, the man has not been afraid to share the limelight. Now he's getting a chance to carry the ball. Also with the blocking back for Brent Fullwood at all. And you see his stats on the year, second and goal. Emmett Smith only got to the five. Fagan came over and cut his legs out from under him along with Matt Millen. Jimmy Jones, defensive coaches with him, pointing out, hey, you did a super job. That's the way to go in and nail somebody. If Dallas could score early, what a boost it would be for the Cowboys. They are averaging in the first half this year four points. The thing is, too, is this is where Aikman, as a young quarterback, has got to be careful. You almost got yourself a guaranteed three. You just don't want to throw an interception. If the guy's not open, throw it away. At least come away with points. Novacek and Awald in as twin tight ends, and you saw the stats on how inept they have been in goal-to-go situations. Novacek can't get there. Dave Waymer, the veteran on the coverage, and it brings up fourth down. Novacek would be the man to go to. He's been a, the guy that they've tried to get the football to. 39 catches for three TDs this year. Done a great job. Aikman dropping back. They isolate him now. Waymer came from New Orleans, not as quick as, you, as he was, but this time, this is adrenaline. I'll guarantee you, this is a young guy throwing the football four yards out of the end zone. I mean, that's just purely adrenaline. Ken Willis will come on to try the field goal of 23 yards. The rookie has had a fine year. Drills it through, and on the turnover, the Dallas Cowboys have taken a 3-0 lead over the undefeated 49ers. Dallas gets a field goal out of the fumble recovery and leads 3-0. Last week in their loss to the Jets, they were inside the 25 five times and did not get a touchdown, and you just saw the same kind of thing. There's the scoring drive, only four plays, four yards, and the Willis field goal. A lot of that has to do with confidence, though. you got a young quarterback. You don't want him to throw the ball someplace where he's going to get it picked off. Ken Willis to kick off to Tillman and Carter. He has not been able to get the ball deep. This one will come to the sixth. To Dexter Carter, the rookie out of Florida State. He's wrapped up as he got to the 24-yard line. Jesse Solomon was down to make the tackle on special teams. The 49ers, of course, led by Joe Montana, the highest-rated quarterback in NFL history. At his current pace, he could throw for 5,000 yards this year. Jerry Rice could go over the 1,000-yard mark tonight. He leads the NFL in yards, catches, and receiving touchdowns coming into today's play. The best up front guy, McIntyre, he excels as a run blocker straight ahead or as a pulling guard. Rassman, the single setback. Montana throws to right. Breaks two tackles and has the first down out across the 35-yard line. The Dallas defense has been improved this year, especially the line by getting Daniel Stubbs from the 49ers. He has four and a half sacks coming in. Middle linebacker Gene Lockhart is having another fine season. Last year, he led the world with an amazing 222 tackles. The best in the secondary, former Viking Isaac Holt. He's a good cover man, has three of the club's four interceptions this year. Four-man rush, Noonan with pressure, it's a screen to Craig. 40, 
to the 42-yard line. Washington makes the tackle as he got to about the 43. Roger Craig has caught more passes than any other NFL back in history. He just passed a couple of weeks ago, went past Walter Payton. And that particular play, Mike, replaces the running game for the San Francisco 49ers. I spoke to Roger Craig yesterday. I asked him about the running game. He said, we never had a running game. We've always thrown the football more. We use little swing passes to replace it. But the statistics say they gained 122 yards a game last year, 82 this year. Here's Craig on the sweep. They seal it off nicely, got him outside. And he's across the 45 to the 47, should be the first down. Ken Norton and Isaac Holt up from the corner to make the tackle. Ken Norton is the man that they're counting on to make plays. There you see him line up off the ball so he can have an opportunity to flow. And here it's exactly what he does. Gets in McIntyre's hip pocket, slides along the secondary. A lot like the Dallas Cowboys used to do out of the flex with their middle linebacker. They like to do it with Ken Norton from the weak side linebacker position. Cowboys shell blitz and Montana changing the play. Here they come, and they got it. Norton backed off, then came strong, and Montana just took the sack rather than do something silly. That's difficult communication for the center and the two guards. They've got to protect the inside. You always tell guys, right here you'll see it from the right side. He just shoots the gap. It's a late move. The tackle's got to come up because the back can't possibly get there quick enough. There was no way Rathman could fill it. The guards got to slide. They got to make a sight adjustment. Unfortunately, Norton got there so quick they couldn't. Rathman dove but couldn't get there. Second and 15. We'll go with two tight ends, Jones and Wall. Montana with a half roll, slips and sack. Noonan was coming hard, but Stubbs got there with him. And five and a half sacks on the year for Daniel Stubbs, the former 49er. I walked around the field before the game. People may not realize we are in a dome, but there's a big hole in the middle of which the field is exposed to the elements. They also wet this field down and wash it. It doesn't drain real well when it just gets wet down and damp. Montana that time slipped on where the surface is damp. And I really never understood the concept of having the hole over the place. Man of money. Third and 19. Four-man rush. Montana pressure. Dumps it off. Sidney broke a couple of tackles. Fumbled the football out of bounds. Big break for the 49ers. It goes out of bounds at the 40. They are going to mark it, however, back at the 45. And that would be short of the first down. This is... This is a rule that is compliments of Ken Stabler from batting the ball down the field. But they say he's down, and where he fumbles out is where he, he'll hit the ground. Here's a reverse angle. Now, this is something the Cowboys have to do. They've got him stopped for about an eight-yard gain. Arm tackle, arm tackle, arm tackle. Now, he goes down. They're going to rule him down where he was. Jesse Solomon made the stop. They cannot advance it from the point of the fumble, so they bring it back to where he would have been down and mark it there. Ray Horton tried to recover, but it will bring up a fourth down punting situation for the 49ers. Number 87, Derek Shepard. Harry Hilton has come on to punt, and Derek Shepard is waiting at the 10-yard line. Shepard re-signed by this ball club to help the punt returns, and he's done it. A career 10-yard average. Last week, he had five and averaged nine. Cowboys with 10 men on the line of scrimmage. High snap. Got it out of there toward the near sideline, and it takes a Dallas bounce and will go out of bounds at the 28-yard line. A punt of only 21 yards for the third-year man out of Colorado. Dallas leads at 3 0. We'll be back in a moment. Penn State Notre Dame ought to be a fun ball game. The Irish uh, ranked number one again in a rather tenuous spot for college football teams this year. You like it, right? Go Irish. What can I tell you? They're where, they're where they should be. Dallas takes over, leading 3 0 from its own 28. They 
Hoffman sends everybody out on the pattern, dumps it to AJ across the 35 to the 37 yard line. Romanowski makes the tackle. Very important for Troy Aikman. Good call in that situation. You're backed up a little bit. First time you've been in your own end. Try and throw the ball to the back. It's a five step drop. You get rid of the football. You don't ask your line to have to block for a long time put the quarterback in jeopardy of a sack. Of course, with the 49ers' success, they have a target painted on the back of their jersey. Everybody comes out against them as strong as they can. Trying to pull that upset, and Dallas looks pumped tonight. AG almost lost the handle, got it back, dove across the 40. It's a first down. Matt Millett will get credit for the tackle. AG was the starter for a couple of weeks until Highsmith moved in, but he has gotten the starting job back. Well, he got it by really default. Alonzo went to Jimmy Johnson and said, listen, my knee is not right. He didn't, he had his knee scoped, but the reason he missed so much of the offseason was because of an infection, not because of an injury. He's been placed on IR and probably won't play the rest of the year until his knee gets strong. Smith. Got another four. Kevin Fagan, the first man to get to him. Four-year veteran out of Miami. About three and a half yards. Number 54, Matt Millen, leading the charge defensively. The difference between this year's Dallas team and last year's Dallas team, and Jimmy Johnson admitted to us uh, something I guess everybody already knew, that they didn't have a chance last year. The game that they won last year, they felt very fortunate the uh, game we had in Washington. Now he feels he's got a chance to win if they play well. Yeah, they shouldn't have won anything last year. They got lucky. This year, like, he, you're right. He feels like they can line up and at least be competitive. Second and seven. Play action. Something else they wanted to do a lot of. A.G. dumps it. Or A.G. went low for it. Romanowski got out there on the coverage and it's incomplete. Aikman's throwing up there. I mean, there's no other way to describe it. He's not in a rhythm. I, I think it's going to take probably a half of a quarter or maybe an entire quarter for him to get comfortable. He goes back. He sets pretty well. Now, he feels the pressure. Now, look. That, that's that's a, a labored delivery. It's not fluid. It's like, oh, my gosh, I have to get it there quick. He's got to relax a little bit more. Is that normal nerves or only because he's a second-year player? Normal nerves because you're playing the world champion. Third and seven from the Dallas 44. Four-man rush. Aikman rifles this one and completes it to Kelvin Martin. That's the difference in the throw. He, had, he was, he set, he knew exactly what he wanted to do with the football and he let it fly. Don Griffin and Romanowski were in on the stop, the 35th catch for Kelvin Martin. If you can, remember the throw just a while ago, a little tentative. Watch this now. He sets up, checks the safety, and just hums this thing. Nice tight spiral. Catch it on the tee. Martin had off-season knee surgery, as did Michael Irvin. Got Irvin in a slot this time, and Novacek splits out from his tight end position. There came Haley, opened it up for Dennis Brown. Haley was roaring through. Charles Haley given a lot more freedom to rush the passer. Now, he feels like they're using him the way he feels he should be used. Comes way down inside, comes down two people, puts pressure up the middle. That gives the opportunity for the ends to collapse. As soon as you flush the quarterback out of the middle of the pocket, allows your tackles and ends and backers from the outside to really get a pretty easy sack. That was the third sack for Dennis Brown in his rookie season in the NFL. Second and 18. Incomplete at the 43-yard line as Alexander Wright had it go right through his hands. The rookie out of Auburn, their second-round draft choice. He's been very inconsistent. They think uh, he's one of these guys you would label a project. It's going to take him a while to learn the pro system to get comfortable with. The thing is, he's got so much speed, and you have to have it at wide receiver. Four, it's two, five, three. I mean, that's, that's illegal. I mean, that, they should give him a ticket just walking out of the house at 4-2-5. Nobody should go that fast. You and I tried to run that fast. Our nose would bleed. 
He's only caught nine balls this year. That one he should have. Third and 18, he certainly should. Four-man rush. Aikman on the roll. 50, 45, got to the 42-yard line. He'll be about five yards shy of the first down. Pierce Holt on the backside chased him out of bounds. Protection is, is the key when you have a young quarterback. You just don't want to give them any reason to get scared back there. And, of course, the, the offside, the blind side, your left tackle is important. Now, here they put Jay Novacek over there to help out on Haley a little bit. But big Kevin Gogan started for Mark A. just gets that big body in front so that Haley can't get to him. Griffin back for Saxon punt. Boomer headed to the end zone, and it makes it. 44-yard kick, but a net of 24 as it will come out to the 20-yard line, and the 49ers will start from there when we come back. Three-nothing, Dallas over San Francisco. 2:20 to go in the first quarter of play, and next Sunday night, Joe and I will be in the jungle for a game that has become very important in the AFC Central. The matchup between the Steelers and the Bengals. We'll get to see Bubby Brister and Boomer Esiason. The bees, the, the killer bees, the, the the killer bees on offense. And they are deadlocked at the top of the AFC Central in what has become a wild year. Already. Delay, Craig. Fourth back after he got to the 25. Norton makes another tackle. Very interesting thing you saw Roger Craig do as he came through the line of scrimmage. Had the ball in one hand after he took the handoff. As he approached the line of scrimmage, covered it up with two, and then moved back out. What will happen is, besides his knee being, see him cover up. Now he starts to get into traffic, cover the ball up, get out in the open field a little bit. Spread it out. Remember, he hasn't handled the ball a lot. Not just his knee, but handling the ball is important. Cost him three games. He played 114 in a row, just short of Jim Brown's record. Lockhart makes the tackle on Rathman, but he crosses the 30 for the first down. What a year Lockhart had last year. 222 tackles, and I'm sure he never wants to make 222 again. Doesn't seem like anybody else on defense made a tackle. No, of course, he didn't get him. They didn't get him. We talked about the lack of... of really talent they had last year. They just didn't have anybody up front. I mean, Eugene was the tackling machine. First and 10, 49ers down 3 nothing. Time running out, first period. Play action by Montana. Jones, the tight end across midfield to the 41-yard line. Manny Hendricks brought him down after a gain of 28. Brent Jones, great pair of hands. All they had to do was work on his blocking a little bit more. Comes through, just crosses across the uh, field, gets into a soft area, winds up making the catch. Really is wide open. Flag on the play, but it is defensive holding against Dallas, so it will stand. This play action towards the tight end locks up not only the coverage, but the linebacker that's supposed to be on him allows him a much freer release of course, when you run the play action, you get reaction from the linebackers. The secondary then runs back because, oh my gosh, it's coverage, and you got the soft hole. Montana is off to your average start. Four for four, 60 yards. Craig, nice hole this time. Got about four. Danny Noonan wrapped him up by the ankles. When you talk about the 49ers, you have to be aware of the expectations. People think they're going to win by three touchdowns every week. They think Joe Montana is going to throw for 400 yards and five touchdowns every week. And when they don't, I mean, you can't really expect it to happen, but when they don't, people are disappointed. And they say, hey, we're not playing well. But they are. They're 8-0, even though they trail here 3-0 at the end of the first quarter. We'll be back in a moment. Ready to start the second quarter with Dallas leading the San Francisco 49ers 3 to nothing. Mike Patrick and Joe Theismann back with you at Texas Stadium. Your impressions of the first quarter? Well, I think the Cowboys came out full of adrenaline, made some big hits, caused the fumble. The 49ers just got the wake-up call. 
you know, they said, oh, geez, we're in a football game. I guess it's the same old thing we have to do. Let's start slow. Now let's drop it in drive and move on down the field. And that's exactly what they've started to do. Jimmy Johnson said if the 49ers did not play up to their capability and Dallas played the best they could, Dallas had a chance to win. And right now they lead. Incomplete as they go over the middle intended for Rice. Isaac Holt on the coverage. He is their best man-to-man -man defender, although he doesn't get that much opportunity to play man-to-man -man in the Dallas defensive scheme. Can't take a chance. Everybody says, oh, God, he's a great man-to-man -man guy. Why don't you play man-to-man -man with him? The trouble is, is you got to have another corner, especially against the 49ers. Let Holt go one-on-one -on -one with, uh, with Jerry Rice. John Carroll absolutely eats your lunch. So, I mean, you know, you do the best things for the talent you have, and that's what Dallas is doing. 49ers are used to not scoring in the first quarter. They've gotten only 20 points in eight games in the first period this year. Montana with plenty of time over the middle. Taylor at the 22, broken tackle to the 20-yard line. First down, a gain of 16. Just amazing how well-disciplined San Francisco's football team is to not turn the ball over. We saw... We saw Roger Craig cover up. That time we saw John Taylor when he got in traffic cover up. Now here comes a blitz from the outside. Steve Wallace sets, sets. Jesse Solomon's in there to try and put pressure. Heck, he says, let's dance, Jesse. You'll see it on the left top side of your screen. Same thing. You got to try and get pressure inside on Montana. They'll let you stand outside all day. Four-man rush, no pressure again, dumps it off to Rathman. He's got five, there's a flag down on the play. Tackle made by Jack Del Rio. They picked him up as a plan B free agent from Kansas City. Offensive interference. Interference, 89, offense. 10 yard penalty, replay first down. Tight end Wesley Walls out of Mississippi. Those linebackers get locked up on tight ends. They get real close to him. The only way a tight end can get free is to push off. The question is, how far does your arm get away from your body? If it looks like it's far away, they're going to throw the flag. So spot the ball at the 30. And Dexter Carter has checked into the San Francisco backfield. He'll go out on a wing. Craig is a long setback. Delay to Craig. Jeff Coat has him as he got to the 26 yard line. So they get four back. Nobody seems to worry about the 49ers until you get inside two minutes. Then they get scared to death. The end of the game, the end of the half, everybody goes, uh-oh, they're going to score a touchdown. With good reason. So they, yeah, that's right. They're almost starting to fall into this mode. Let, uh, let's wait till one minute and 30 seconds to go. Sometimes when you fall behind and have that much success, it's easy to fall behind because you've got a little lackadaisical about it. Craig wide open in the flat. Norton took him out of bounds with a solid tackle at the 22. Norton has become an outstanding linebacker. A lot of speed, probably their best defensive player in the front seven. Of course, Isaac Holt, I think, one of the better corners in the league. He's got a lot of speed, and they try and put him in positions so that he can make play. He has really become their designated playmaker on defense. Last year, he shared a spot with Jesse Solomon, but Solomon held out until the middle of the year, and Norton won the job uh, almost by default, and the idea is... Uh, no one will ever get it away from him again. He's already made five tackles. Third and 11 here. Blitz. And Montana threw the bad ball intended for Jerry Rice. Jimmy Johnson said, sometimes on the blitz, you'll get him to throw a bad pass. Sometimes you get to him. More often than not, you get burned. That time, they made him throw it wall. This time, what they do is they bring the corner hard. Here, I'll show you on the old, you'll see Francis coming right straight off the corner. Now, it's one thing to go upfield. It's another thing to now hit a beeline. The guard couldn't get out in that case to get out and make the block. That was actually Jesse Sapolo, the center, only could barely get a hand on him. Forced Montana to get rid of it just a little early. Mike Culper, who has hit two-thirds of his field goals, will try one from 39 yards away. Booked it. And 
Dallas holds its 3-0 lead as Coper misses his eighth field goal of the season. ESPN Sunday Night NFL is brought to you by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. To arrange a thorough test drive, simply phone your nearest BMW dealer. By Michelob Dry, once you experience the bold taste with no aftertaste, there's no going back. And by Levi's Dockers, if they're not Dockers, they're just pants. Looking through the hole in the stadium, where we have a sellout crowd of more than 62,000. They've loved it so far. Dallas leading 3-0. Our opening game last year was Dallas at Washington. The Cowboys pulled an upset. And as Yogi Berra would have said, it looks like deja vu all over again. It does. It has a very reminiscent feeling. Aikman, the quick out, and skipped it to Martin. They'll call it a catch at the 22. And there's a flag down at the 25. Looks like it's going to be holding against the 49ers. They're locking up on the tight ends on both sides. Holding 58 defense. Five yards penalty, automatic first down. Veteran Keena Turner, who says, who me? And that will give them a first down at the 26 and a half yard line. Oh, 11.57 to go, first half. Very quick moving ball game. Emmett Smith leans out to the 30. Turner was in on the stop. Millen was in the area, so was Pierce Holt. The Goodyear Blimp America from Spring, Texas. Piloted tonight by Ron McDuff. He's out of Anson, Texas. Wave. Thank you. Good job, Don. Hurry up, turn around. Stay away from the look, hole in the roof. Look where you're going. Those things don't move very fast. You can turn around. You can go have lunch and come back, and it's not going to move very far off where it is. Second and seven for the Cowboys who have dominated statistically so far and lead 3-0. Delay, AG. Broke one tackle, got a, somebody had a hand on the face mask, and they missed it. AG was a little upset as Dave Wehmer came up from the safety and made the tackle. Maybe he had him around the neck and did not get the man. Does a good job of breaking a tackle right here. Before that, now Waymer's got it. Actually, Waymer doesn't. He's got him on the. Uh, he's got him on his shoulder pad. Huh? Uh, I don't know. Hard to tell. Looked like it was locked in the shoulder pad. Obviously, the official agreed with me. Well, so he's you guys a former are Notre Damer. I knew you'd step <laughs> in there. Third and eleven for Dallas. Three wide out. Aikman rolls away from Haley. Buys some time. Now tries to run. Went for the slide, but a little late, and Don Griffin gave him a shot as he tried to slide for the sticks. Remember, when you slide, it's where you first hit is where you're down. Well, the, the thing that Aikman is doing, what you see him yelling at is he's yelling at his wide receivers. I'm in trouble. Come on back to me. He doesn't want to take, number one, he doesn't want to take a shot like this. Number two, he'd rather, he'd rather throw the ball downfield. I tell you, you take some hellacious blows out there. Ooh, wow. Heck of a shot. Saxon will come in to punt. It's fourth and a yard from the 36. And Griffin is back to receive, waiting at his own 26. Low line drive kick. Griffin at the 26-yard line. One tackle away from getting a huge return. Got to the 41. A return of 16 after a punt of 38. Bill Bates, the leading tackler on special teams, downfield for Dallas. 9.38 to go. First half. Dallas leads it 3 0. Troy Aikman on the phone to the coaches upstairs, but he was really upset after that last play, and for good reason. Right here, you'll see the outside receiver runs an out and up, but everybody's running away from him. He's out here scrambling, waiting for somebody to work back and help him out. As he rolls to the right, good call, away from pressure. Now you go out there, you buy some time. Now all the receivers have 
there's nowhere to go. Come on back. Hey, guys, come on back. That's what he was upset about. It's like in basketball. If you're in trouble, somebody's got to come to you. That start the 49ers have had tonight. They start from their own 41. Quick out to right. This is where he's the most dangerous. To the 49-yard line. Lockhart got out there with Manny Hendricks. It makes you catch your breath, doesn't it? It really does. And it's so important to get the ball in the hands of your playmakers early in a game. Let them know that they're involved. That's exactly what they did. You saw the second play they went to. Uh, they had to fumble the first one. The second one, they throw the ball to Jerry Rice. Give him a chance to make a big play. You don't think Rice would like to play Atlanta again, where he had five touchdowns and 225 yards? Craig got outside. First down, driven out of bounds at the 44-yard line. Once again, Hendricks was over there. Here's the Budweiser storyline. The 49ers fumbled inside their own 10 on the first play of the game. And that set up the only score, the Willis 23-yard field goal. San Francisco has not had won the battle of field position. And the 49ers also blew an opportunity after a fine 10-play drive. First and 10 here at the Dallas 43. Montana to wrap. A nice job by Del Rio right on top of it. Raffin a good receiver at Del Rio. One of those plan B guys, and Dallas was the most active team in plan B. It's really helped their team. Well, and this defense that the Second Dallas down. Cowboys is playing is really playing fits with the 49ers because they're not getting a chance to get the big play. It's one thing to be patient. Here, what happens is if you do break a tackle, there's three guys there to, to, to tackle you. So they're having to be patient, but maybe even in their case, too patient. Second and nine. Dallas playing Ben don't break. They haven't even been a whole lot tonight. Here's the deep ball. Rice dropped the ball. Incomplete. And Rice is complaining he was grabbed by the face mask, and he sure was. And a flag has gone down at the six-yard line. Isaac Holt on the coverage. But the question is, is, is it a catch? I don't think he, so. He ran a little bit with the ball. Did he have possession? Hard to tell. Obviously, it looks like it's going to be a face mask penalty question is is did he have the ball did he fumble it and what happened it will certainly affect the spot of the ball he's got whole feet perfectly thrown pass there's the face mask there's possession uh, he's got he's got the football I don't think he ever had possession Joe okay Watch how the ball stays up on the front of his helmet. Well, it actually stays on his shoulder, not on his helmet. This ball's right on his shoulder. Look, he's got possession. After the ball was overthrown, we do not have interference. We have a face mask penalty. After the ball was overthrown, it's a previous spot foul, 15 yards and a first down. Now, they're assessing it as a 15-yard, not a 5-yard. And did I miss something? Did he say the ball was overthrown? Gene Barth, the official, I, I, I think he's just using the wrong term. Obviously but not overthrown. I, I believe this is a catch. That ball is against his chest. One step, and now it's knocked away. No, I'll have to agree with you. I mean, that, to me, is a catch. The and here is the replay booth. They're obviously going to take a look at this. Mark Burns is the replay official. I don't think Gene meant overthrown. They are reviewing it. Uh, they cannot review the face mask, of course. That's not within the parameters of instant replay, but they can rule whether it was a catch or not if they find conclusive evidence. Here's the reverse angle now. Rice, ball is into his hands, against his chest. One step, two steps. Now the ball gets knocked away. There was an infraction committed, but that's a, I don't know, I think it's a fumble. There you go again. There it is. It's against his chest. Now it gets knocked away. I think we he have a reversal by instant replay. Instant replay said that it was a completed catch. 
When the ball hit the ground, we had a whistle blown by one of the officials down there. We still have a dead ball, major foul. We're going to go half the distance to the five-yard line, down to the two-and-a-half, first down. Well, that'll get them pumped up here at Texas Stadium. Big break for the 49ers. They rule it as a catch. There can't be a fumble because the whistle blew. See, that's where instant replay is it, uh, really got its hands tied. It made the correct reversal, saying that it was a fumble. Problem is, when the official blows it on the field, that's what's the, the governing rule. First and goal, Harry Sidney behind Rathman. Stacked up at the two, second effort may have gotten him to the one. If we can go back to that for a second, but what it does, what instant replay did do, was give them the big play that they deserved. Yeah, but it also should have given the Cowboys the fumble recovery. There it is. Now, you'll see it. it's not against his helmet. It's against his right shoulder pad. He's got the football. Now it gets knocked away. That's a fumble. But the face mask penalty would have nullified that. It gets complicated after a while. Rathman diving. Didn't make it. Del Rio dove with him shoulder to shoulder and knocked him down inside the one. Word from the field, and this is the way it'll be explained and everybody has to live with it, is the official thought that the ball was incomplete, blew the play dead. When the official blows a play dead on the field, what happens after that is inconsequential. This is not, however, third and goal from the one. Rathman and Sidney are the back. Tight formation. Rathman. No signal. He did not make it. The Dallas goal line defense has held again. I think they got to go for it. I, I think in this kind of a football game, you're the world champion. You can't settle for a field goal. You just can't do that. Maybe you take a timeout, talk about it, but you can't settle for a field goal. He doesn't make it. Lockhart and Jeff Coat wrapped him up. He doesn't make it. And now Joe Montana wants to talk about it on fourth and inches. 6.31 to go. First half, San Francisco finally gets on the board. They are leading the Dallas Cowboys 7-3. The drive, 59 yards, and Rathman capped it off with a one-yard dive and the big play that set it up, the complete pass to Jerry Rice that was ruled complete by instant replay. Well, and also, just for those who are keeping track, the 49er attack is 12 runs, 13 passes so far in the game. Dixon and Wright are deep to receive. This is Dixon at the nine. Got it back to the 27, 28 yard line. Leroy Etienne was down on coverage along with Spencer Tillman. ESPN will start your college football Saturday each week with College Game Day. Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Charlene Hawks come your way at 11.30 Eastern. And Saturday, we have a triple header at 12.30. Minnesota against 19th-ranked Michigan. Then at 4 o'clock, Penn State against number one Notre Dame. Georgia against 15th-ranked Auburn. We'll wrap up our triple header at 7.30 Eastern time. Let's see how Dallas will respond to being down for the first time in this game. They'll start their own 28. They spend the throw on first down. Dumps it short and intercepted. Matt Millett to the 23. Emmett Smith made the tackle, but a terrible pass by Aikman right into the hands of Matt Millen, and Aikman has thrown his 14th interception this season. But you, this one is nothing Troy can do about it. He gets he gets pressure in his face as he tries to step forward. He winds up yanking the ball down a little bit, lands up right in Matt Millen's face, gets his, right in his face, gets his eighth career interception. Watch this, he's looking to the left. Charles Haley coming across. Now he steps up, he actually steps in to Agee. Tommy Agee trying to help out wound up being right in front of eight. So a break for the 49ers, and they will take over at the Dallas 22. Millen, a great acquisition from the Raiders. We've got to go up top right now to put another six on the board. And that's what Montana wants to do. Dumps it off instead as Rice ran a crossing pattern to the 17. Lockhart makes the tackle. Ray Horton was also back there. When you see a team spread out like that, you just know he's looking to try and get one-on-one -on -one somewhere. If he gets it, he's going to try and go for the whole bundle. 
There's Matt Millen on the sideline. Montana so far, 10 out of 12, 133 yards. And now he has Mike Wilson in there, who's been playing the last couple of series in place of Taylor. So Wilson and Rice are the wideouts on second and five. Harry Sidney tried to cut back. There was no hole. Noonan made him cut back, and Lockhart was waiting for him. Cowboy defense ranked 10th, 10th in the league, really doing a good job against them. They're really defying the 49ers to throw the ball into a zone and saying, look, we'll give you the six-yard completions. We don't think you can complete all of them, but we'll give you a chance to throw them, and then we'll make the tackle. So far, that game plan has worked for the Cowboy defense. Third and six now with five minutes to go. 49ers best in the league when they get the ball in that kind of field position. Taylor is in. Rice, Lewis, four wide. And now Montana wants to burn a timeout. Didn't like what he saw. And will call the timeout with 4.46 to go. What happens to a quarterback? Qu uh, timeouts are so precious. Now, why would he use a timeout? I know I'm asking you to speculate. You don't know exactly why. Oh, sure I do. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Excuse well, I'll speculate me. anyway. You, you don't mind burning them when you have a scoring opportunity. It's more critical for them to be in the right formation. Once teams get down inside the quote-unquote red area or green area, however you designate inside the 20, you've got half a dozen plays down there that really are designed to get you touchdowns. Looking at that formation, that was a play to design somebody to get in the end zone. What happens there is Montana looks up and he says, hey, I don't want to waste it. So I'll call the timeout, go back. You don't mind burning one down here, even with four minutes and 46 seconds to go in the half. Really, you got two timeouts left if you get the ball back. You got one that you own and the two-minute warning. And, you know, based on the way the 49ers moved the ball down the field, they really don't even need but one. 4.46 to go in the half. The number's on Montana. He's facing third and six right now from the Dallas 18. Three-man rush. Dumps it off. Rathman makes the catch at the 12. He'll be very close to the first. Excuse me, it's Jones. Very close to a first down. They had to get just inside the 12-yard line. Gene Barth going to bring the chains out. Joe Montana, curious. I used to love to do this as a quarterback. You go over and you look. And you tell him, oh, I got it. Yeah, we got it. I mean, look, get a better angle. See, Joe, see, the further you get away, it's like lining up a putt. Just like lining up a putt. You drop back, get it far enough away from the ball, and you can see it. See, now he'll walk by and say, see, Gene, I told you. Then, I, you can just, it's all part of it. Half the length of the football, and they've got the first down. That would have been a big play for Dallas to be able to stop him and force the field goal try. Instead, they have a new series of downs starting from inside the 12-yard line. The Dallas defensive unit is really playing well. I mean, it, you start with a championship. To build a championship football team, I think you start with defense, get some stars on offense, and get that continuity. Cowboys are starting to build one. Rice and Wilson, the wideout. Sydney, the setback. Montana drops it. Sydney, it's a seven. Fourth all the way back to the nine. Lockhart wrapped up one leg and wouldn't let go. Montana is so good at finding the second and third receiver. Nobody better. Has tremendous vision, has tremendous presence and understanding where everybody is. But on this play, he wants to go to Jerry Rice. Makes his move. Manny Hendricks gets inside. Now you say, well, that's pass interference. If anything, it could be offensive pass interference because once a defensive player establishes position, the offensive player must avoid him. Second and six for San Francisco, leading 7-3 here in Dallas. Delay, Rathman. Not this time. Lockhart was waiting, as was Norton. They share the tackling duties on this club. Both have over 70 coming into this one. Clock turning, 3.03 to go. George Seifert said that it's the external pressure that has changed on this team, not the internal pressure. 
And look at the passing yard difference. Third and five. Montana having trouble. Rice, what a catch! Holy cow, what a catch! When you want to throw the ball away and the guy snags it for a TV anyway, you just know things are going your way. Pretty decent coverage by Kenneth Gant, but Jerry Rice showed you not only the speed, but the great hand. Gant's a rookie. They want to find out what he can do. He's got great quickness. Rice says, I'm open. Look at this. Joe's trying to throw this thing away. One, two, in, touchdown. Unbelievable. Great players making great plays. Jerry Rice with his 11th touchdown of the year. Culper with a point after. In 85 games, Rice has now scored 81 touchdowns. That was vision. That was as close to a Dwight Clark catch as you get against the Cowboys in that championship game. Hey, look at it. He gets just the left hand on it. Now he cradles it against his stomach. The left foot is down. The right foot is down. Has possession. Touchdown. Montana's throwing this away. He has nowhere to go. He says, oh, heck, I'll throw it out of bounds. Well, maybe I won't. That is the 77th touchdown catch of his career. Steve Largent holds the NFL record with 100. And Jerry Rice, before he's done, may break every pass receiving record in the book, and they may stand for a long, long time. There's, these, there's two guys on the field tonight that are setting records that our grandchildren will be chasing. Montana, 13 for 15, 150 yards. You talk about third down efficiency for a quarterback, it's five for five tonight. Nobody does it better. And the 49ers give themselves some breathing room. They lead it 14-3 now. Very critical, this drive for the Dallas Cowboys. Number one, they've got to move the football. Keep San Francisco off the field. Don't give Montana and that two-minute offense a chance to do its magic. And secondly, try and get something on the board. Going in 14-6 would be a great lift for this football team, or 14-10. Dixon and Wright are deep to receive the kickoff. Alexander Wright from the eight. Burning speed. Won't get a chance to use it. Cox dumps him at the 22. There's a flag down. Solid tackle by Greg Cox on special team. With 2.31 to go in the half, the officials trying to sort this one out. Ronnie Lott, interested observer, Charles Haley, Fagan, all want to sort of know what's going on. So do we. Usually you get it from the players. You know, they turn around, start pointing and waving. Obviously, Lott agrees. He figures he'll put his helmet on and they'll walk it back. When holding during the run back on number 90, we'll go half the distance to the goal line. Approximately the eight and a half, 19, eight and a half, nine yard line. Willis Crockett coming down on the left part of your screen. Just a good tackle. It's one thing to get your head in front. It's another thing to get your hand behind. And then he pushed Leroy Etienne in the back. All right, so you got a choice. So he Holding, <laughs> pushing, hitting in the back. I mean, pick one. So Dallas has to start from the eight-yard line with 2.31 to go. I'd love to see him throw the ball down the field. They just don't do it, and it'd be a great opportunity. Daryl Johnson is in for the first time. Haley going for the sack. Almost got Aikman. He throws it. Made sure nobody could catch it and one hopped it to Kelvin Martin. That's a good try, though. I mean, you're backed up. Make the defense defend all that field, uh, except you got to get your offensive line to block. Aikman has not been a fan of the conservative offense. There it is, right side of the screen. Kevin Gogan trying to block Haley. Now, that could have been Aikman's fault, too, because Gogan set up a lot shorter. Aikman was back deeper. You, you know, who do you blame there? Do you blame the offensive lineman? No. The quarterback has got to set up where the offensive lineman has a chance to protect him. 
Dallas looked so good early in the ball game, moved the ball quite well. In the second quarter, they have picked up nine yards total offense. Just nine. You're talking earlier about Jerry Rice and what a brilliant career he has had so far. Here are the leaders in touchdown catches. Largent in 200 games caught 100 passes. You see the rest. And you won't find Jerry Rice until we go to the second page. But he has 77 receptions for touchdowns in 85 games. He's also run a couple in. But 77 in 85 games, it's astounding. You know, it's just amazing that they can put him in a position where people are going to continue to cover him one-on-one. -on -one. He gets one-on-one -on -one with somebody. He, I mean, I talked to Ike Holt about covering Jerry Rice because he covered him when he was at Alcorn State. And Jerry was in college, has covered him when he played with the Vikings. He says, Rice gives you one move, not a lot of fancy stuff. It's one move and then try and catch me. There's no fanciness to it, just pure grace and speed. When they first came into the league, they said he had football speed. He wasn't blinding speed. Oh, yeah, he is. <laughs> Second down. Aikman with a roll, trying to buy some more time. Throws complete. Got it to Martin out to the 18-yard line. Depending on the spot, it'll be close to a first down. They needed to make nearly the 19. Johnny Jackson, fifth round draft choice a year ago out of Houston, was in on the stop. And we're coming down toward two minutes, and Troy Aikman is going to let it go all the way down to the two-minute warning. We have a timeout here in Dallas. The San Francisco 49ers going for their ninth straight win this year are up 14-3. San Francisco leading in 14-3 at the two-minute warning here in the first half in Dallas. Coming up at halftime, Chris Berman will have highlights of all the other uh, games in the league today, the fastest three minutes in television. We'll have the commissioner, Paul Tagliabue, joining us live here in the booth in Dallas. And Joe will be back analyzing the first half of play here. Controlled early by the Cowboys, but the 49ers have come on to take an 11 point lead. And there is an unusual sight Jimmy Johnson with a headset on. He doesn't like to wear it. Well, he's afraid he's going to intimidate everybody up in the booth, but uh, with two minutes, he wants to see what's going on. First and 10. You accused him the other day of being afraid to mess his hair up. Still think that's part of it. He took that good naturedly. Martin with a catch at the 25 yard line. Dave Waymer on the tackle. Clock running. We're down to a minute 48. This is a great test. You, I mean, you, you're really going up. Montana's the master of two minutes. Aikman gets a chance to show his stuff now in the two-minute offense. Second and four. Four-man rush. Martin again makes the catch out to the 37-yard line. Jackson makes the stop. It's a first down, a gain of 12. Get him to the line of scrimmage. There he is signaling out seven. He's saying seven. What you do is you signal to the wide receivers the route, and then the inside guys run the complement off it. Dallas has two timeouts left. Haley comes from the outside. They did a nice job on him. Novacek the tight end. First down at the San Francisco 45-yard line. Good job by Kevin Gogan. He is not the starter. He's in there because Mark Tuane is injured, and he's done a nice job on Haley when he's been on his side. Gogan, not the swiftest. They call him the eighth wonder of the world. Big guy, really big guy, 6'7", 309. Haley, quick, tries to come upfield. Soon as Gogan gets his hands on him, though, he has an advantage because he can use that weight to run Haley around him. Well, you get the feeling he's 3'11". If Newton, who is 322, and he get together for lunch, you figure lunch is the eighth wonder of the world. Not at my house. Aikman airs this one out intended for Urban and tipped away at the last minute, Eric Wright. Wright was burned for a couple of touchdowns against Green Bay. He says, I'm not playing well. If I keep playing like this, I won't be playing at all. Well, and this is the kind of play you're going to have to take a chance on. you got some breathing room. Irvin does that little stutter step and tries to run by Wright. Now, the ball is really underthrown. I mean, I, you know, the thing is, is Michael Irvin is just back. This is his first chance to really start. In a game, your adrenaline flow is different than in practice. Aikman really can throw the ball further with all his receivers if he wants to. Almost a behind-the-back catch. Second and ten with a minute one to go in the half. Aikman dumps it off. Johnston to the 35. Still on his feet. Broke the tackle to the 19-yard line. 
Great hustle by Kevin Fagan, number 75, who chased him all the way downfield. But it's a gain of 28 and a first down for the Cowboys. Big play by Daryl Johnson out of Syracuse. A nice play by the offensive line. And Troy Aikman, good execution on the entire play. Aikman steps up in the pocket. Haley comes around the outside. Now watch, he comes around the right side. Aikman looking downfield says, wait a second, let me find Johnston. Right there, lowers his shoulder pads. Hard to tackle, guys, when all that's coming at you is knees and shoulder pads and helmets. Big time run there by Johnston, and the Cowboys use their second time out. Right watch side Gogan of your screen. here. Right side of your screen. Good job by Gogan. You got a hawk, Haley. You know he's going to keep on coming, so you can't quit. He'll have some special incentive tonight. Haley started the day as the leading sacker in the NFL. But after Derek Thomas's unbelievable performance this afternoon, where he got an NFL record 70 of 15 for the season, and Haley got one tonight. He's got a he's got a ways to go. Intended for Martin, and Martin had to play defensive back and knock it away from Don Griffin. Good coverage by Griffin. I think that Aikman, see, what they've done is they've rolled Aikman out a couple of different times. This is a good situation to get him out of the pocket. The prevent defense, which everybody argues about, why does a team play it? And this is exactly what happened to the 49ers. They played the prevent, they rushed four, dropped seven. Now they're going to start bringing some more people. They're going to try and put some pressure on him. You stand him in the pocket, he's going to get sacked. Second and ten. Here comes the blitz. Dumps it for Novacek, incomplete, and good coverage by Dave Wehmer. Normally what happens, you get downside in that red area, the best matchups you get are one-on-one -on -one with defensive backs on a tight end. Now, Novacek has been very productive. The ball's just thrown behind him. Here's a guy that stays out and catches a lot of balls after practice. Everybody wonders why he has such good hands, because he works on it. It's real simple. There's no mystery to being good in this game. You work a little bit harder, you're going to get better. Cowboys have only converted one out of five third downs. They face third and ten right here with 40 seconds to go in the half. Blitz. Aikman drops it. No, the check can't hold it again. If he had made the catch, he would have been well shy of a first down anyway, and Waymer was right there. So now they will go for the field goal. Novacek, he sees the blitz. He gets out. That's a good read by Aikman, a good read by Novacek. You just see him look upfield and see Waymer before he caught the ball. He was all ready to make his move to break it in for the touchdown, but he forgot one thing, the football. And Michael Irvin threw a great block before the ball got there and got away with it. Willis will try to make it 10 out of 10 this year inside the 40-yard line. This will be a 37-yard drive. And he does. Willis is an American-style soccer kicker. You notice he lines up almost directly behind the ball instead of side saddle. And one of the kicking gurus in the country says he has the best form of any American-style kicker he's ever seen. An American-style soccer kicker. That's a new one, isn't it? Okay. They That's a cut the lead definition. to eight on the second of Willis's field goal with 32 seconds to go in the half. And psychologically, that's very big for Dallas. It really is. They did an excellent job of moving the football. They continue to struggle down inside the red area. But the truth is, is that they're going to start getting touchdowns when they get some plays made. How many passes have you seen the 49ers drop tonight? Well, go back as far as you want. How many have they dropped? Fact is, Cowboys have dropped three. That's the difference in a big play. A guy catching a ball, a guy putting it on the ground. Next Sunday night, we'll be in Cincinnati to watch the Steelers and the Bengals go at it, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Bubby Brister, who has really come on, as have the Pittsburgh Steelers against Boomer Esiason, who is not having his best year. Neither are the Cincinnati Bengals, but it is a tie in that division. The thing is, is I just think all that, all those games on the road, five games on the road, you lose all kinds of consistency. I'm sure that Boomer's going to be happy to be back in Cincinnati. Tillman and Carter are deep to receive the kick of Willis. A little more foot into this one. 
Carter from the two. Has the seam. Fumble. And knocked out of bounds, recovered by the 49ers. It looked like Vincent Smith knocked it loose after a return of 38. And Smith comes up limping. Vincent Smith, another one of those young football players, those rookies trying to make the ball club and make impressions on coaches. This is why they got the little guy. Knocks it out of bounds, but again, the Cowboys can't quite get the bounce to go their way. Knocked out of bounds, brings it back to the spot. This is almost exactly, exactly where the 49ers were last week against Green Bay. And last week against Green Bay, they scored in the two-minute drill. They've done that four times in eight tries this year. This is the most dangerous place you can put Joe Montana. Mike Holcomb, their offensive coordinator, has left the coaching booth. He's left the coaching booth. He's on his way to the locker room to put the plays up on the board. Right now, the plays are being called by Joe Montana, Steve Walsh, and George Seifert. Now, I mean Steve Young. Steve Walsh can't be calling him. He might be sitting home calling him, but he's not. Steve Young has a little list of plays just for this situation. They responded the ball at the 37 where the fumble occurred. Montana wants to go long for right. Had coverage by Williams, who was right in his hip pocket. And a wry little smile on the face of Joe Montana. 18 seconds to go in the half. Obviously, Jerry Rice didn't go where he wanted him to. 49ers have one timeout left. That's what they've done in the two-minute drill this year. Six scores in eight possessions. I think what you do is you try and put the ball down the middle of the field for 20 or 25 and use the timeout. Three-man rush. Dumps it to Rathman. Got to the 48-yard line. It's a first down, but the clock is running. Now they stop it with 11 seconds to go. Hendricks and Bates made the tackle. Now you're in a situation, if you throw the ball over the middle, you probably are not going to get, get another play no, off. That's the play to throw the ball over the middle. And in a, in, when you're trying to drive the ball in a two-minute drive, you pick a spot where the one before you have to get it to the sideline and throw it down the middle, use your timeout. Now they need to pick up... Oh, 20 yards to give Kofer an opportunity to have a shot at a field goal. And they'll probably try and do it with something on the sideline. Kofer has 250 plus shots this year, 52 and a career long 56. And there is Steve Young in the ball game, the backup quarterback as the fourth wide receiver. Uh, they tried this a couple of weeks ago. Young ran a pass pattern, came back and said, Hey, I was wide open. He said, but you know those quarterbacks, they won't listen to you. <laughs> 11 seconds to go. Montana for right. And got out of bounds at the 25-yard line. They'll have the shot at the field goal. Robert Williams on the coverage. 27 yards, and you Great. just have to ask yourself, how does it happen time after time? Well, easy. You put Steve Young in the game, and everybody says, oh, my gosh, Steve Young. You line Jerry Rice up, move him in close on the formation. Here's Young down here. Here's Rice. Look at all the room he has outside. You look, you send these guys down the field looking for one of those throw-up-in-the-air passes. He runs a quick corner and is open. Kofor will try a 43-yard field goal. Plenty of distance, and he got it through. So Culper, who is specialized in last-second field goals, does it again. And the San Francisco 49ers will take a 17-6 lead to the locker room. Right now, let's join Chris Berman. All right, Michael, thank you very much. And so the master of the two-minute drill does it in about 15, 20 seconds. Joe Montana, the Niners lead at 17-6. If they win, they go 9-0. They'd only be keeping pace with the Giants T-minus three weeks till Super Bowl 24 and a half. As we go around the NFL in week number 10, the Giants look great today. They were hot, hotter than the Los Angeles weather. Phil Parcells question anymore the San Diego defense. Joe Bird, two picks. He has seven on the year. The veteran Charger defensive back. Marion Bucks. 
rumbled for 114 yards. The Chargers, the Lightning Bolts at 500, they win it 19 to 7. Art Shell undefeated as head coach in the mausoleum, 10 at all. But into town come Don Mikowski and the Packers. Touchdown to Vince Workman, my way back to you, babe. Magic, 28 yards to Perry Kemp. The Pack win at 29 to 16. Seahawks at the Chiefs. What a day for Derek Thomas. NFL record, seven sacks. Dave Craig of the Seahawks sacked nine times. But with the score 16-10 KC, Thomas misses sack number eight. And on the final play of the game, it's Craig to Paul Scancy. And Seattle beats Kansas City 17-16. Chuck Knox's first win in Arrowhead since 1973. The Chiefs had nine sacks. The Raiders had eight sacks today. Didn't work. Both teams lost. When we return, the commissioner, Paul Tagliabue, visits the Niners up by 11. ESPN Sunday Night NFL caps off a day that features NFL Game Day and NFL Prime Time. This game is a special presentation of ESPN, the NFL, and your local cable system, along with NFL Game Day at noon Eastern and football's fastest hour, NFL Prime Time at 7 Eastern. It's the most comprehensive look at the NFL on television. If you don't have cable TV, call 1-800-CABLE-ME and get connected so you won't miss any of ESPN Sunday Night NFL. We're at halftime in Dallas where the 49ers are leading the Cowboys 17 to 6. And welcome back to Texas Stadium, everybody. And we are very pleased to have the National Football League Commissioner Paul Tagliabue join us as our special halftime guest. Paul, a lot of things going on, a lot of controversial things in the NFL. Let's start with Phoenix. Uh, the referendum voted down in Arizona for the Martin Luther King holiday. So it looks like the Super Bowl is in jeopardy right now. What's, what's your current position? Well, it's in jeopardy. We've told the people in Phoenix that we'll keep the door open. If they can work out a solution, we'd be willing to cooperate with them. A lot of people are asking, why was the game awarded to Phoenix in the first place with this already the situation? Well, the Phoenix people wanted us to go ahead and consider them along with the other candidates, and we felt it was appropriate to do that at that time. Paul, when has it become the policy of the National Football League to get involved in really political issues that are decided by the state? Well, I don't think we got involved in politics. I think our game became involved in their political debate, which has been going on for about 10 years. I think the solution is for us to get out of the debate. They can decide it themselves, and we'll play the game elsewhere. Let's hit a couple other issues as quickly as we can. Uh, thing that's been an impress an awful lot is the Lisa Olson investigation up in New England with that incident. Where does that stand right now? Well, I received a report this week about what happened in the Patriots uh, locker room, and I'll be deciding in a couple of weeks what I have to do about that. Collective bargaining. It's been an issue. When you took over, you said one of your number one priorities is to try and get agreement with the players. Uh, it was announced in the papers that Jack Donlan will probably maybe be stepping down at the end of this year. Are you now going to take over that, and do you see a resolution to the problem between the players and the owners? Well, I don't think I'll be taking over. I think we'll be continuing with the management council, and we'll be trying to have discussions with them about settling some of the lawsuits. Where are you now? Well, we've been having discussions on and off about settling the cases, and I think those will continue. Are you optimistic? I'm always optimistic. <laughs> Paul, well, you've been very aggressive ever since you have become the commissioner. Is this a function of the, the commissioner that you wanted to be, the kind of role you saw for the office? Is it also a function of the ownership, uh, what they wanted you to do? Well, I don't think I'm aggressive. I just think that when issues arise, you should make decisions, and that's what I've been doing. I think that's aggressive. Well, you can't avoid decisions in life. You have to make them. Uh, one of the other situations that is going to be coming up shortly is expansion. Where do we stand on that? Well, we're trying to target the addition of two teams in the NFL by 1993. And we'll be working on that between now and our league meeting in March and looking at all the cities and make some decisions at that time. When you took over, as you look back on a year now, some of the highs and lows. Well, I think one of the surprises has been that seven of the playoff teams that we had last year have been having trouble winning some games this year. On the other hand, we've had teams like Miami and the Raiders, the Bears playing very strong. So that's a surprise to see teams like Minnesota and Philadelphia having, having their problems, but maybe Philadelphia come back tomorrow night, beat the Redskins, and they won't be having problems. Don't say that. <laughs> but I, <laughs> do you, do you, but I, I think the, the way the teams have been performing is a bit of a surprise to us. Is it a shift away from some of the parity you hope for? I don't think so. I think it's the cycle we always see in the league with teams coming back and other teams going down, which is what the draft and the other player rules are supposed to produce. 
How about free agency? There's been a lot of talk about that. Do you think that will ever happen in this league, or would that destroy pro football? I think it would hurt. I think that you'd lose what Joe was referring to, the equality of opportunity among the teams to produce winners in every city in the league, and I think we need to keep that mechanism in place. Paul, thanks very much. We certainly appreciate you stopping by, and uh, uh, good luck the rest of the season and the rest of your career as the NFL commissioner. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Joe. You bet, Paul. We'll be back to Dallas with San Francisco leading the Cowboys 17 to 6 right after you listen to this. This portion of halftime is brought to you by Acura Automobiles. Experience precision, craft, and performance. We're at halftime in Big D where the 49ers are leading the Cowboys 17 to 6. Welcome back to Texas Stadium. Mike Patrick and Joe Theismann with you. Hope you've enjoyed the first half. More football coming your way. We want to talk about that first half. Jimmy Johnson said he, his idea was to keep it close, not make a lot of mistakes, maybe come up with a big play now and then. Made a couple of mistakes. They have not come up with a big play. They're down by 11. Well, when the biggest thing is, is you have to have receivers make catches for you. We saw Wright drop one, Novacek drop two. Yeah. Granted, he was trying to get in the end zone to make somebody miss, but you got to take the football with you. Overall, I would rate the way the Cowboys are playing exactly the way they're playing. They're playing like a team trying to gain some identity, trying to do something positive. Nothing spectacular, nothing big. 49ers are playing like a team that has a tremendous identity. They just get it done. It's just unbelievable what the 49ers can do. They continue to perform time in and time out. We saw earlier in the first half, Troy Aikman struggle, get hit out of bounds, trying to make a play because the receivers didn't come back. On this play, Joe Montana gets in trouble, steps up in the pocket. Jerry Rice continues to work, stays in bounds, and it looks like Montana's going to throw the ball away. As it turns out, Rice winds up snagging it for a touchdown. The 49ers are doing what the 49ers do, scoring with hardly any time on the clock. The Cowboys are playing within a game plan, but they've got to come up with some kind of big plays if they want to get close in this game. Ready to start the second half, and the Dallas Cowboys will kick off. The 49ers to receive, already leading 17-6. to And it's just amazing to watch Montana and Rice work together. Tillman and Carter are deep to receive. Willis puts it down at the 10. This is Carter. Hit hard as he crossed the 25 to about the 27. Bill Bates in on the tackle again. The backup safety who does such an excellent job on special teams. Here are the first half stats and look at Montana. 15 out of 18 passes. 179 yards. They only rushed for 30 yards. Again, the rushing game has not been what they want it to be in San Francisco. One turnover for each ball club. Well, you know, like we said, the balance of that before that two-minute drive where they ran the three plays was 12 to 13. They're trying to run the ball. They just can't. Rathman and Craig in the backfield. Montana looked to Craig, then goes to Wilson. Great defensive play by Isaac Holt, who they got in the Herschel Walker trade. The individual leaders in the first half, rushing Craig, six carries, 22 yards. Rashman, Rathman only got nine on five tries, but Jerry Rice, 96 yards in the first half. I mean, 100 yards is a benchmark for an entire game. You've had a great game if you have 100 yards receiving. Well, that's one thing to, to say to a guy who, who maybe is opposite him. Uh, you know they're going to throw the ball to Rice. You got to double. You got to put somebody on his nose. You can't let him run Scott free off the football and do what he wants in the secondary. Second and ten. Craig on the sweep. And Dallas played it very, very well. Norton, the first man in the backfield. Then Lockhart and Del Rio cleaned up. I think. The San Francisco running game is taking undue criticism. The offensive line has been shuffled a little bit. It's the same players, but the truth is, is what people are doing is they're bringing up, for example, the way Dallas plays defense, they're telling their linemen, penetrate. Don't let the linemen pull. Don't let the linemen get out. Try and upset that uh, running game. It's exactly what they're doing. They're forcing the 49ers to throw the football, and they're saying, fine, we'll do it. George Seifert said the reason was the line changes. Frank was hurt. They had some holdouts. Montana on third and long to Craig out of the backfield, driving for the first down, and he has it at the 39. That is the Roger Craig of old with that high knee action, dragging people with him. In this case, it was Manny Hendricks. 
toughest thing about the 49er offense, even on third down, they don't make personnel substitution. All five people out into the pattern. Everybody's out somewhere into the pattern. You just gotta, you can't cover everybody. In this case, they don't cover Craig. But everybody's out in the pattern. That's what makes them so effective on third down as well as first and second. Update on Montana, 16 out of 20, 201 yards. Delay, Craig, high stepping it through the middle out to the 43 yard line, a gain of five. Best game Craig has had this year is 82 yards. He came into the game averaging only 2.7 yards of carry. A lot of people wondered how bad the knee injury was. This may be the best conditioned athlete in the National Football League. This guy runs hills as exercise. You think he even gets pleasure out of it? Nobody can get pleasure from running hills. Second and six. Montana with a half roll, throws to Rice, bumped out of bounds by Holt. It's another first down. This time it's the Dallas 44. Gain of 14, and Rice has 110 yards on the night. Jerry, again, nobody on Jerry Rice's face. He's going to kill him if they just let him run down the field wide open. Holt's doing the best he can to stay with him. Ball's perfectly thrown. He picks up a few extra yards and goes out of bounds. Rice has 969 yards receiving so far this year. Geez, if you're the Dallas defense, at least make the guy work a little bit. <laughs> Typical 49er drive. Pick, pick, pick. Here's Rathman down to the 42. And once you get tired of having him pick at you, they hit you for 50 yards. Well, what's scary is they get in a rhythm. We haven't seen the Cowboys really get into a rhythm other than the drive before the end of the half. Then they were, the you, there's a rhythm that comes. It's the play from the sideline. It's stepping in the huddle. There's a clock that's in a quarterback's head. And when he's in his sink like Montana is in now, you got to come up with a big play on defense to disrupt him. Maybe blitz him. Take a chance. Throw him out of his rhythm. Second and seven. Norton shows blitz, and Montana changes the play. Norton comes anyway. So does everybody else in Montana through his second bad ball of the, of the game. Because they blitzed him. I mean, you, you can't let this guy get in a rhythm. He'll absolutely eat your lunch. It's the same thing with Jerry Rice. You don't put anybody on his nose. You let him get off the, the line of scrimmage scot-free. He's going to own you. That has become a familiar sight. Montana staring toward the sideline, getting the play. The best the game has ever seen. Unquestionably the best this game has ever had. When he retires, he may not own all the records, but he's got all the respect. Third and seven. Until the wing in Canton for him. That's the thing. Cowboys fake a blitz, come with three-man rush, get some pressure, dump it off underneath, and maybe a first down as Rice makes the short catch. Bates was in on the tackle as he got to the 34-yard line. And they'll have to measure for this, it looks like. A quarterback's biggest concern is protection up the middle. Let the guys come around the corner, but give me a chance to step up. It's exactly what the offensive line has done. Montana gets a chance to step up. Rice goes and finds a soft spot, sits down in the middle, makes the reception, knows he's got to pick up five or six more yards for the first down. See, Montana doesn't throw the ball past the sticks. He throws it to the receiver, and it's their job to pick up four or five yards. It was a first down. The other thing about Rice, you see, is willingness to go over the middle. Craig on the quick handoff. Not much there. Norton wrapped him up. Good defense by Norton, who slashed in from his outside linebacker spot, held him to a gain of a yard. Roger Craig pulling his way for about one. Here's the play coming in from the sideline. Steve Young on the right. Little man signals. It's interesting. Quarterbacks get together and you talk about what you want to signal. These things don't mean anything to anybody except the offensive staff and those two guys. Norton has made seven tackles tonight for the Dallas defense. Second and nine. Opening drive of the second half. Jeff Coat comes free. It's a screen and Craig didn't catch it.
Okay, you know, you, I give that Dallas defense a whole lot of credit. I mean, they're not getting a lot of help from their offense as far as point production goes, but those guys just keep coming and coming. They're not making big mistakes. They're playing real solid, sound, good football. Dave Wernstead, their coordinator, you know, has, has said, hey, look, we've got to just try and come after him and control the game a little bit. That was the first time Jeffcoat has gotten any pressure on Montana, and it was on the screen pass. Third and nine. Four-man rush. Montana dumps to Raffman. Broke one tackle, couldn't break another, and Bill Bates kept him short of the sticks at the 25. One thing about Bates, he may be one of the slowest defensive backs in the NFL, but when he gets in the area, he's going to lay it to you. Oh, boy, he puts that eye black. He gets that eye black all over himself. One of the really gutsy guys. When you see a collision, when Bates hits somebody, and Rathman's another one of them, that's just two bulls going at each other, and you heard the pow. Fourth and three. Here comes Mike Kofer, who ended the first half with a field goal. This will be a 43-yard attempt. Hooked it wide, and Kofer has hooked two out of three field goal attempts tonight, and the score holds at 17-6, 49ers. ESPN Sunday Night NFL is brought to you by Volkswagen. Say the word, Farfik Nugent. It's what makes a car a Volkswagen. And by ITT Hartford. When you need us most, we're at our best. 9.06 to go, third quarter of play from Texas Stadium in Dallas. It's the 49ers, 17, the Cowboys, 6. Dallas ball at its own 26-yard line. Aikman near side complete. Irvin makes the catch, forced out of bounds. It's the 37 yard line. Don Griffin made the tackle after a gain of 12. First half stats on the Dallas individual. Emmett Smith, the leading rusher. Martin caught four for 38. And Lockhart came up with eight tackles. Norton has been in on seven. Great defensive performance by those two linebackers. When a team doesn't win a lot of football games, individuals don't get a lot of attention. Eugene Lockhart is playing as good a middle linebacker in this game today as there is. The fact is, his ball club hasn't won a lot, so he just doesn't get the attention. First down. Emmett Smith off the right side, has a hole across the 40 to the 42. Romanowski and Dave Wehmer made the tackle. Last year, Lockhart was the first alternate to the Pro Bowl after making 222 tackles, and a lot of people thought he certainly should have been in the Pro Bowl. It's a tough position because now you have more teams going to the 4-3 defense, four down linemen, three linebackers, but still there are a number of them that are predominantly 3-4, so it's a tough position to make it in. And of course you got Mike Singletary. <laughs> yeah. I think so. Game of seven on the last play, second and three. Play action by Aikman. Throws it away. He had A. Walt out there. But Haley was right with Rob A. Walt. And that play didn't develop very well. Well, the other thing he had, you know, I mean, he had Pierce Holt in his face. What? You see A. Walt, he gets tripped up, but the pressure continues to come. Now, he really doesn't have a place to go with the football because Pierce Holt's right in his face. And it's one thing to have a little time to make a good throw. It's another thing to, uh, to have pressure in your face. Are those handmade, you think? <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised we're in Texas. Third and three. This is a big drive for the Cowboys. If they can get some points here. Aikman over the middle from Martin in complete thrown well out in front of him. Pollard on the coverage. 49ers have also overcome the loss of Tim McHire, uh, who is outstanding corner, playing so well with Miami. It seems when anybody leaves from San Francisco, somebody else just steps right in. Not only steps in, but the other guys pick up the slack. McHire having an all-pro year. Really, I think, has ignited that Dolphin defense. Brought a, a little bit, of, a lot of character to him, a lot of chutzpah. Said some things to the guys they didn't like. He says, hey, I came from a championship organization. I want to make you guys feel like you're a part of a championship organization. Of course, Chet Brooks is out. They've been nicked up on defense. Jackson to punch to Griffin on fourth and three. Pretty kick. 
at the nine. Giving ground. Got one block, got another beautiful block and up to the 20 yard line. A return of 12 after a punt of 49. San Francisco ball when we come back. The beautiful skyline of downtown Dallas from the Goodyear Blimp America. The Americas out of Spring, Texas, piloted by Don McDuff, who is from Anson, Texas. And we can look up and see him. He can look down and see us. The 49ers take over at the 21. They lead 17 to 6. 7.25 to go third quarter. Craig in motion. Montana looks that way, goes back the other way. Wilson across the 30 to the 31. Norton on the tackle. Again, there's a flag down. Manny Hendricks was also in there. It looked like a motion call. Number 77 offense, 10-yard penalty, replay first down. Illegal, illegal use of the hands to the face, Gene Barth tells us. Ball spotted at the 11, first and 20. Do you gamble here on defense? No, no, not at all, because then Rice has almost 200 yards receiving. <laughs> Send a four-man rush. Here's the bomb for Rice anyway, and a nice job by Isaac Holt. You were thinking like the 49ers. Yeah. That, I mean, it's it, like I said, the time to take a shot is when you're backed up, especially on first down and 20. Isaac Holt does an excellent job on Jerry Rice. He's not getting too close to him. Going to give him a lot of room. Now watch this. One move Rice is going to put right there. You have to look real carefully to see it. I mean, it's just a question of I can run by you, and the ball is well overthrown. They went at each other in college, Alcorn State and Mississippi Valley State. I, I would think Isaac Holt would have seen a lifetime of Jerry Rice by now. He still can't get away from him. Isaac Holt over Rice, yes, same as it ever was. Well, Holt's held his own tonight. Second and 20, Craig. Hendricks came up hard from the corner and they slammed Craig down at the 10-yard line. Bill Bates in there along with Newman. I tell you, Noonan and, and Hamill and Stubbs and Jones, Lockhart in the middle of that Dallas defense, doing a great job. Jesse Solomon in, getting a little bit more work. It keeps Solomon in as a designated pass rusher. You know, this is the first time Joe Montana's played in Texas Stadium. I mean, of all the places he's been and all the years he's been in the league, he was hurt last time they played here, so the players were kidding him and told him that the roof was cracked, that it's really a dome stadium. Walking around last night in practice, looking up. Montana is perfect on third down, but now he faces third and 19. Dumps it off. Sydney, well short of the first down. Bill Bates makes another tackle at the 22. The Cowboys' defense holds. Well, the 49er running game, only 34 yards on 17 carries tonight. That is two yards a shot. And this is against a team that is 22nd in the NFL against the rush. Yeah, but they're they're 10 overall. I mean, they're defying them to throw the football. Got to remember, three tenths of a yard more than the average last week. <laughs> so they'll have to punt it away on fourth and nine. Barry Helton, who got off an awful-looking kick the first time out. Dallas with a lot of guys on the line that come hard and don't get there. Derek Shepard trying to get up to it, and Helton gets another bad bounce all the way back to the 49er 40-yard line. This time a punt of 17, so the 21-yarder looked pretty good. Timeout on the field. The Cowboys with excellent field position when we come back. The 49ers special teams meeting may turn downright ugly this week. Mike Kofer one for three in field goals. Barry Helton has averaged 19 yards on two punts. And Dallas with an opportunity outside the San Francisco 41st and 10. Aikman under pressure. Oh. Buried by Pierce Holt at the 50. 
Somebody get that guy's number. Unbelievable. This is what Pierce Holt does. I asked Nate Newton about the way he plays. He said he's got an, a move for you every play, right side of your screen. He just splits the tackle and the guard. You see Haley coming, but there's Pierce Holt right in Aikman's face. He's got a move for him. He, he's constantly working. Um, John Giesick, their offensive guard, told me he's a lot like Howie Long. Always got a game plan, always changing up. Three and a half sacks for Pierce Holt on the year. He had 10 a year ago. Second and 18. And Aikman will just get out of bounds in front of Bill Romanowski. Kevin Fagan was putting the pressure on and forced him to roll out. Great job of secondary coverage again. They're just rushing these four guys up, dropping everybody back. Nowhere to go as far as Aikman's concerned. There they go into coverage. It's a zone. It's a soft zone. He scrambles a little bit. Again, nobody coming to him and really nowhere to go but out of bounds. 49ers do a great job of staying with people after the quarterback is flushed. So it's third and 17, and the Cowboys are only one out of seven on third down tonight. Four-man rush. They want a screen. Emmett Smith, fumble, San Francisco ball. Nothing worked. The 49ers diagnosed it beautifully. Johnny Jackson came up to make the hit and shake it loose. The recovery by Haley. This screen takes a little too long in developing. Aikman should now set. Now the ball should be gone. Holds on to it a little bit long. Emmett Smith has got his back to Johnny Jackson. Jackson just puts his helmet right on the ball. Comes flying out. Charles, Charles Haley, always in relentless pursuit, winds up recovering the fumble. So the Cowboys get a break on the bad punt. Set up shop at the San Francisco 40 and a half yard line and do absolutely nothing with it. Lose 11 yards and turn the ball over. And Jimmy Johnson was beside himself. Those are the opportunities he knew they had to convert tonight to have a chance. And that's the problem they've been having on offense. They just can't keep any kind of consistency. When it does come, it comes very seldom. You know, they get one drive, maybe a drive and a half. After further review by the replay official, the call stands. First down. They were reviewing it to see if it was a catch to begin with and ruled that it was. Or if he might have been down by contact or if they're hit like that, dead by contact. Yeah. Really took a shot. For the 49ers starting Dallas territory. Craig, maybe three to the Dallas 46. Jimmy Jones, the rookie out of Miami, makes the tackle. And Jimmy Johnson, of course, familiar with the Miami players, and he'll get he'll get one anytime he has a chance. Traded with San Francisco to get stubbed. Drafted Jones. He could do worse than get Miami players. Well, the other thing is too is he, he's got a confidant in this league, Al Davis who, in my opinion, is one of the two, three best football people in the business. Jimmy talks to him every week. Montana dumps it quickly to Jones, his tight end to the 38. Wrapped up by Willis Crockett. Montana has such a command of this varied offense and such... Uh, we talked about vision earlier. Vision is only part of it. If you have to go start looking for guys, most of the time you don't have the time to do it. No. You have to know where they are to begin with. It's reaction. You know your offense. You know where your people are supposed to be. At the first step that a quarterback takes, the defense starts to move, and he knows where everybody's supposed to be. He knows where his people are supposed to be. Montana up top for Walls. Out of bounds. Good coverage by Isaac Holt, who wanted offensive interference against Wesley Wall. Versatility in the tight end position. Lower left part of your screen. Isaac Holt in coverage on a tight end. Ah, if he'd have caught that, he'd have had tough feet staying in the white area. 
Walls has only caught one pass all year coming into this team. Montana now 22 out of 30. But he has a more important role in this team, and that's as a center snapper on punts. Second and 10, right to the near side. They get the Craig. Ran into a stone wall, fell forward at the 35. Jimmy Jones was the guy he banged into standing up. And then Tony Tolbert, number 92, got in on the tackle. So it'll be third and seven. And the Dallas crowd trying to get back into it. The defense has played well for the most part. Steve Young is in the lineup as one of four wide receivers. He will flank to the far left. Do not expect the ball to go in his direction. You never know. They go the other way to Rice over the middle. Good tackle by James Washington. And it's very close to a first down. They needed to get inside the 28. They'll stop the clock in May measure. Manny Hendricks did not like the spot. I think they felt like he bounced down and wound up going forward about a yard and a half, two yards. On third down, which is probably the most critical down in football, Joe Montana is 10 for 10. That's how you keep the drives going. I personally think first down is your most critical down. Third down is what keeps the drive going. First down sets you up. An inch short. And George Seifert will not go for the field goal this time. 25 and 2 is George Seifert's record. Is that amazing? We asked him last night about last year, everybody said he inherited a Bill Walsh football team. Does he feel like it's his own this year? He said, I've been a part of the organization for so long. I don't own it. Nobody really owns it. We're there together. Fourth and an inch. Montana with a sneak. It'll be close. Question is, did he fumble the football? It looked like he was scrambling around at the bottom of that pile. And if it's a fumble, he got a lot of pointing. Cowboys pointing their way. Niners going in to dig out. This is where you sort of pull people off. It's like a scrub, rugby. Big the, guys pulling the little guys off. The last guy you want to be is the one on the bottom. I have been on the bottom there. That ball changes hands three different times down there because they have to wait until it unpiles. Look at this. Joe Montana is there somewhere. Oh, we can't find him yet. And no signal. Cowboys insisting they have it, but they're not going to get a fumble recovery. And now let's see where the spot is. They will measure again, and Jimmy Johnson is irate. That ball looks like it's spotted exactly where it was spotted before. There's Montana. He's trying to sneak. There's the ball. See it coming down? Yeah, it's coming down. There's another angle. Now he's got it. Boom, there it is. It's right out. That's Stubbs. It's right down there. Stubbs gets it on the ground. That ball is on the ground. And they evidently said he picked up enough. Now They got two inches on the play, first down. Who had the ball at the bottom? Um, who knows? We'll never Obviously, know. the 49ers had it, according to the way the officials ruled. Huge play there. Kept the drive alive, and it's a first down inside the 28. I personally don't feel like quarterback sneaks should be allowed in football. I don't think that a quarterback sneak should be called. You got guys 230, 235 in the backfield with four yards of running momentum. Give them the ball. Time running out in the third quarter, 17-6, 49ers. Here comes the blitz. Montana picks it up, dumps to Rice. Four guys bring down Jerry Rice at the 19-yard line. Holt and Washington, the first two to get there. You throw a blitz at Joe Montana, he's going to look for one on coverage, one on one coverage with one guy. You saw him look left there. He sees the blitz. He throws an ugly duck out to Jerry Rice, but it doesn't matter. 
makes the catch. You just don't ever see the 49ers drop the football. No, you don't. Rice, 10 catches, 132 yards on the night. This will end the third quarter at Texas Stadium and the undefeated defending world champions holding on to a 17-6 lead. Fifteen minutes of football left from Dallas, Texas, San Francisco, leading 17-6 over the Cowboys. The Giants, of course, won again today to go to 9-0. San Francisco trying to make it 9-0 and 17 straight, one short of the NFL's all-time record, including postseason games. Unbelievable. It is. Second and a yard for Montana. Craig behind Rathman, gaping hole to the nine, first down and goal. James Washington, the safety, playing in place of All Britain, had to come up to make the tackle. And now Jimmy Johnson sees it slipping away. Well, the defense has got to be exhausted. The offense has hardly been on the field, and you just can't expect your guys to stay out there for 40, 45 minutes. And, and be able to uh, and be able to, to stand up. And that was the longest run for the 49ers tonight, a total of nine yards. What an excellent drive, taking nearly four and a half minutes off the clock. Craig Lockhart got him first. He managed to get inside the five to the four. Washington came up to help out. Montana has not been handling the exchange from center very well. That's about the fifth time tonight I have seen him struggle with the ball. Now, it's caused by one of two things. I talked about the dampness on the field. It could be that he's getting a wet spot. The other thing is, is when the center has to block a man in the gap, he reaches hard to his right and doesn't bring the ball all the way back to the quarterback. But he has been having some trouble with it. Second and goal from the four. Montana intercepted. Horton picked it off in the end zone. The loose ball will not count. It's Dallas football as Horton makes his first interception of the season. And it couldn't have come at a more critical time for the Dallas defense. What the 49ers try and do is they move Jerry Rice. You see, this is Brent Jones, this is Harry Sidney. Now, here comes Rice right here. He's gonna go in motion. He wants to go in the flat. These guys clear out. The uh, Cowboys drop back into the secondary. They play a zone, not man to man. See him fall back. Now Horton, he just feels it coming. Drops right back, steps right in front of him. 13.36 to go in the ball game. The 49ers make a turnover, leading by 11. Dallas with the interception to stop a San Francisco drive. They take over on the touchback at their own 20. The defensive turnovers have been not much help to the offense this year. After 13 takeaways, that was the 13th. That was the 14th. They have not scored an offensive touchdown off the break. Toss it back to James Dixon in the backfield as a running back the first time. Dixon, who had not played running back since junior college, had been moved in from a wide receiver. Tomorrow's headlines brought to you by Levi's Dockers. The Giants win their ninth straight. That's 12 straight regular season games. The Seahawks with a great comeback in spite of Derek Thomas's unbelievable NFL record seven sacks. And the Packers beat up on the Raiders. The Bills keep pace with the Dolphins in the AFC East. Andre Ware did not have a outstanding debut in Detroit and the Dolphins number one defense allowed only 154 yards Aikman throwing off his back foot what a catch by aging great grab and a heck of a job by Aikman to get it there gives you an idea how strong an arm he has that's not the easiest thing to do normally you want to set your right foot and get your body balance going forward in this case he drops back throws it off his back foot and oh looked like it hit the ground possibly might have lost it you saw the 49ers signaling and now they're going to take a look at it 
And it's going to be third down and 10. It's not going to be a completion. That's incomplete. You, might, you don't even have to take a, a look many times at that one. No. Heck of a try by A.G. Couldn't come up with it. Watch. The ball just right there. Back on the 25-second clock. 19. Remember, they have to have conclusive proof upstairs, and that looked pretty conclusive. The instant replay booth is in communication with the field. The communicator on your left, the replay official, Mark Burns, looking at it. They're going to get some new uh, number patches for those guys. I don't know. Maybe that's a shirt. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe, you know how they have inspected by number 60? Uh -huh. We have a reversal on the play. After review by the replay official, he ruled it incomplete. The pass was incomplete. Third down the value of instant replay you get the call right and the other thing is you see Jimmy Johnson shake his head that's because he knows he's on TV but that happened right in front of him and I think he saw it it's just one of those you know like unfortunate breaks I'll tell you instant replay has not been kind to the Dallas Cowboys tonight third down eight yards to go 12 21 to go in the game but it has been fair yes it has Aikman to the shotgun four-man front. Aikman will try to run and knock out of bounds by Kevin Fagan. Just never made up his mind in time. Great job by the secondary of the 49ers. I mean, that's, the thing is, is they're sending four, three, three, four people out. Good protection by the offensive line. That's the third time he's had to scramble tonight and pick up a little bit of yardage. He still is trying to work. I, what I like about him is he's still trying to make a play as he's moving around. He just doesn't tuck it under and run. Saxon will punt. Don Griffin will go deep inside his own 35. Saxon is having an outstanding year as a Dallas kicker. He's been very busy. Led the league until the Giants game when he had an awful day. And once again, Dallas fails to take advantage of the turnover and it looks like a delay will cost them five more yards here delay again five yard penalty still fourth down what you're seeing is the difference in a young football team and a veteran football team that has nothing to do with coaching that has to do with leadership on the field and right now the cowboys don't have enough guys out there who can communicate. Bill Bates is the captain of their special teams and in charge, but he can't run everything. There's got to be somebody up front who can make the call and say, hurry up and stand. So Saxon is backed up five yards to the 23. Not a good kick this time. Griffin can't get up to make the fair catch, and it bounces out of bounds at the 41-yard line. 36-yard punt with the roll. 11.31 to go in the game. Still Niners by... ESPN Sunday Night NFL is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. Engineered like no other car in the world. And by Budweiser, the king of beers with that clean, crisp, cold taste. Nothing beats a Bud. Dallas Cowboys find themselves in a major hole down by 11 points with 11.31 to go in the ballgame, and San Francisco takes over at its own 41. The Dallas offense has gained 15 yards the entire second half. Rathman across the 45 to the 46. Dean Hamill down there with him. Hamill just coming back off of a knee injury. Now, don't you love, look at Rathman's helmet. Look at that helmet. Now, that is a football player. Just cut up, torn up, ripped up the top of his head. There's a man who plays with his helmet. Has to put on a face mask about every two weeks because he smashes his face. That is the picture of a fullback. There he is. Look at that. He's, he's even got leftover paint from, from people in yellow helmets. Gain of five, second and five. Dumps it out to the tight end wall. Walls down to the 44, maybe the 43-yard line where he's driven out of bounds. Washington got him after a gain of 11. Now, they're, they're your offensive changes after the first eight games. This is what they've averaged. Now, you try and seek a 50-50 run-pass ratio. If you look at the right column, you see that the 50 percent for the four years they won the Super Bowls, they ran the football. Their average is the worst this year. Now, these are all the years they've won the Super Bowl. 
They're down the 41% run, 59% pass. I don't worry about it. I got to be honest with you. Everybody's making too big a deal. Well, they're on their way to 9-0. and Apparently, there's no reason to worry. First and 10 at the 39-yard line. That's the number one draft choice, Carter. And the cheer is because the official was level. That's the umpire, Bruce Moyer. You know, he he hangs right in the middle. It looked like they might have landed on his knee a little bit. You get combat pay for that? Yeah, they do. Watch this, right up the middle. Oh, geez, Jesse Sapolo doesn't really have anybody to block. It's a good thing he's Bruce's heir, or else he might have made the play closer. It looks like he gets his right knee banged up a little bit. That's Dennis Riggs, the umpire. It is? Yes. Wait a minute. Sure it is, number 30. What did I say? Bruce, I'm sorry. That's the headline from 38. Bruce is the sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Bruce didn't Bruce want to get delighted. run over. So they will attend to the yeah. official. It will bring up a second and one. And he's up trying to shake it off. Next week, 8 o'clock Eastern, we will be in Cincinnati where the Bengals will take on the Steelers. Bobby Brister against Boomer Esiason. And Brister, after the horrible offensive start the Steelers had, really coming on now, as is, an, as is the entire club. And Esiason trying to right a ship that has had some problems in Cincinnati right now. They are both five and four, one game ahead of Houston. And that AFC Central may go down to the last game of the year. As it always does. Of course, Cleveland there with the coaching change and just really trying to struggle for an identity. Houston lost a tough one to Los Angeles last week. Of course, with the off this week, they're hanging right in. Interesting thing, so much criticism in Pittsburgh about Bubby Brister, Joe Walton's offense. They finally have settled down, started to believe in what Joe Walton has done. And I've been a, a big proponent of his for years. He made me I, what I was as a quarterback in the National Football League, allowing me to learn how to play the game. And he's done it with Ken O'Brien, done it with Richard Todd, did it with Joe Theismann. Now he's having a chance to work with Bobby Brister. And when I talked to Chuck Knoll about it, he said, everybody resists change. We just have to get the guys to accept it. The Steelers are starting to accept it offensively. Defensively, they're playing great. And we will be short an official on the next series. Dennis Riggs has gone to the sideline to have that knee attended to. Second and one. Montana, nice play fake. Over the middle, Lockhart had the interception, couldn't hold it. why they made him a middle linebacker instead of a tight end. That's why, too. But I, there's a lot of credit for Lockhart. It's your middle linebacker. They're running a play-action fake right at you, and you still get back into coverage. Now, you'd expect him to be up around the line of scrimmage trying to make a tackle. Reads his keys, gets back out. That might even have been a tough catch for the guy he was covering, Jerry Rice. We talked about uh, Jerry Rice and Montana's record. Lockhart's 222 tough tackles last year broke the record for Dallas by 35. Rathman on third and short. Del Rio gave him a shot, but Rathman got the body lean down inside the 33-yard line. Tom Rathman hasn't been the same. And, you know, when you look at a running game, especially when you have a two-back offense like the Niners do, the fullback is very critical. I remember talking to him over the last couple years. He'd turn around to Roger Craig and say, hey, Roger, follow me. Well, for a while, Roger Craig hasn't been in the huddle. And Tom Rathman, I think, misses him more than anybody. Right now, Craig is not in there. Carter is the running mate with Rathman. First and ten. There's Carter. Across the 30 to the 28. Lockhart on the stop again. George Allen used to say the future is now. It is not for the Dallas Cowboys. The future is next year and the year after. And the year after. And what they do with the incredible number of draft choices that Jimmy Johnson and his scouts have rolled up here, especially with the Herschel Walker trade. Your Vikings, thanks for the trade. <laughs> oh, no kidding. It has not worked out that well for the Minnesota Vikings and Herschel. Second and five. Montana gets it out to Carter. Carter, horse-collared, lost the ball, flag is down. 
we will have a face mask penalty on Ray Horton, who almost dehorned Dexter Carter, and that will be the second face mask called on Horton tonight. There is another flag on the play. And that could be for Dexter Carter slamming his helmet down. You saw Brent Jones come up to him and say, hey, settle down. Now Joe Montez. See, this is one thing. This football team just doesn't allow guys to make stupid mistakes. You see other players go up and tell him to keep his cool. There's an offside penalty. Steve Wallace moved on the line, so that's one. Dexter Carter gets horse collar here by Horton. There's an elbow oh. uh, across the face. That's an obvious penalty. Now he's upset. Now there's one flag. Now he's going to slam his helmet down. There's his helmet. Bang. That's going to be another penalty on him. So really, we got three penalties on this play. Got movement on San Francisco. Unnecessary roughness by Horton. And unsportsmanlike conduct by Carter. This may take a while. Go get a sandwich. Go get a calculator. <laughs> you know, sit back a little bit. Well, you want to go to the fridge, now would be the time. But come on back. 8.17 to go. With a field goal here, and they are well within Kofor's range. The 49ers could make it a two-touchdown lead. This is going to take some explaining because you have, a, as I mentioned, you have a sequence of penalties. Which one takes precedent is what Gene Barth is trying to figure out, and he'll explain it to us. And one may be a dead ball foul on top of it. We have a five-yard illegal motion penalty on the offense. We have a 15-yard major face mask penalty against the defense. We have a major foul, a disqualification foul on number 35 of the offense. Everything offsets, and he is disqualified. 35 is disqualified. We replay the down. In this case, two equals one. And two equals one equals Dexter Carter is out of the ball game, and I think. Uh, Considering the violent nature of this football game, maybe throwing a helmet is not the kind of thing that gets you thrown out. Well, I don't, you know, it has to be a little, maybe he said something. A lot of times the officials don't want to hear things said to him. Here, he, you see, he just absolutely, he is irate. Look, he's even taking time to get his helmet off. Now he throws it down. Now the official's going to come in from the left side. You'll see the official. Brett Jones is going to try and settle him down. Here comes the official. The field judge comes in and says, hey, look, you can't do that. Now, at that point, he might have said something. Then the flag went up, and that's the disqualification. Well, Dexter Carter is gone. The young man had gained uh, only 192 yards rushing. First round draft choice out of Florida State. It makes it second and five all over again. And Montana takes care of it to Rice to the 19-yard line. That's first down. Manny Hendricks made the tackle. Just amazes me. I mean, I, I got to be honest with you. Maybe I'm not a defensive coach or a defensive coordinator. A team has Jerry Rice. And I just, I let my people play him five, six, eight, ten yards off the ball. Why? Why do you want to do that? Why do you want to let this man at least make him earn his paycheck? Put somebody on his nose and let him battle for 60 minutes. I mean, it just absolutely, there he is up top all by himself again. Isaac Holt backed off about nine yards, backs off a little more here. Rathman trying to get outside. Washington came up and made the tackle at the 20. James Washington out of UCLA making his second straight start. Outstanding run support there. This is the umpire, Dennis Riggs, and he is being taken out on a stretcher with that uh, right knee bandaged, and we certainly hope he's going to be all right. Smile on his face, in spite of everything. Tape on his shoes. See, it's even tough here for officials. They don't necessarily stay that clean. Lewis Richard, the line judge, moves to umpire. Second and 11 after a loss of a yard. Montana with time. Rice with a knee-high catch, brought down by Lockhart at the 13. I'm with you, Joe. It's amazing how the most dangerous receiver in football is open on every play. Maybe that's why he is the most dangerous receiver. And he has now gone over 1,000 yards for the year 
This is their ninth game and the fifth straight thousand yard season for Jerry Rice. He could be a part time player and get a thousand yards. He said he said last year that he wanted to get better and better. I talked to him after the Super Bowl. He said he was going to go out try and get down a little bit lighter to work on his quickness. That's always and that's Steve uh, Young back in the ball game again. Third and five, they go with four wide receivers. Delay to Sydney. Sidesteps the tackle. First down to the seven. Nice play call there. They spread the Dallas defense and went with the draw. What you want to do is if if they're zone, here you go. You've got one, two, three, four receivers spread out. That spreads all, puts all the secondary people back. These guys you know are penetrating. You slide Sydney over, and there's nobody in the middle of the field. Spread them all out. They get the blitz. All they do is get in front of them. Makes one guy miss. Winds up with the first down. Nice job by the left tackle, Bubba Paris. First and goal, Roger Craig. Sidesteps the first tackler. Gets maybe a yard. Ken Norton made the stop. He's been very active tonight along with Lockhart. They are burning an awful lot of the clock on this drive. It's down to 434. I'll tell you something. This is where a Dexter Carter getting thrown out of the game really hurts the 49ers. You don't think of it very much. You say, well, it's one player. You got Roger Craig. Roger Craig's coming off of a knee injury. He's playing on Astro He normally plays on grass. Dexter Carter was in there to spell Roger Craig. Now he's getting more wear and tear on this knee. Look at the total play. San Francisco just dominating everything. Second and goal. Craig cuts back. Lockhart waiting for him in the hole. He got to the five. It will be third and goal. But more importantly, the clock is flying in San Francisco's favor. 13th play of this drive coming up. Dallas. George Seifert, you know, a lot of people have inherited outstanding football team. And they have not done what George Seifert has been able to do well, with this club. You're so right, Mike. You know, there have been other coaches that have taken over for coaches and, and done the job. But George Seifert runs this football team as he wants to. And... Uh, I mean, it's just his record. What can you say? 25 and 2. That's not bad. Third and goal. Montana. Try to run it in. Horton. Touchdown. Montana extended the football, got it out over the cone. You've been watching those running backs. Watching all the running backs. He just reaches out with the ball. All he has to do is have the ball break the plane of the goal line. You can bet he's not going to throw one up for grabs down here. Joe Montana learns from every play. He's not going to make an errant throw. He doesn't see anybody open. Now watch him extend the ball. He knows he's got to get to the cone. There it is. Oh. Look at that. Oh, that's great. What an effort. His first rushing touchdown of the year. Watch him stuff this in the end zone. Look at that. In the air. Ball breaks the plane. Touchdown. A 13-play drive that consumed 8 minutes and 19 seconds on the clock. Well, they did everything they wanted to do. Ate up the clock and still scored a touchdown. They've now made it 23-6 to and put it out of reach. Maybe that's why they're undefeated and have now won 17 yeah, but straight they're, games. They're working real hard. A lot of credit to this Cowboy defense. Uh, touchdown. They reviewed it upstairs to make sure Montana did not step out of bounds before he got the ball in. There. His body was out of bounds, but the thing is, it, it had never touched. That's right, it never made contact. So he can, if he gets the ball over like he did, he gets the six. Kofer will go for the point after to make it an 18-point lead. Three twelve to go in the game from Dallas, Texas. The 49ers, 24. The Cowboys, 6. Because the instant replay official is one of the officials, he's wearing that number 60 in respect for Dix Jorgensen, who passed away. All the officials on the field wear that with respect to what really was a great umpire, a great guy on the field. I mean, he was... He really you kept, had a lot of games with him. He really did. He kept the whole game under control. Uh, you know, a lot of guys, they joke with you a little bit. They help you out. And he was one of those guys who was real special to this game.
refereed last year's Super Bowl. Kofer will now kick off with the 49ers totally in control, 24 to 6. Squib kick picked up by one of the up men. Stepnoski, the center, he gets out to the 34 yard line. A rare treat for the second year man out of pit. They stopped the clock with 3.03 to go from Dallas to 49ers on top by 18. Special time for NFL game day next Sunday. It will start at 11.30. That's next week only, 11.30 a.m. Eastern. So be with us a half an hour earlier on game day. 24-6 here. And Babe Loffenberg is in to replace Troy Aikman. The last time uh, Loffenberg threw a pass in anger was November of 88 against San Francisco. Guns his first. Knocked down. Almost intercepted. Brown had a shot at it as it came off of Novacek and Dave Wehmer, who knocked it away. And you wonder why they pull Aikman in a situation like this. Well, first of all, you don't want to get him hurt. And secondly, you know that the 49ers are going to tee you off. And Babe has been there. He's a veteran, so he's not going to put himself in a situation where he's, he's, he wants to get hurt. And it's a way to protect the investment of the franchise as well as get your backup a chance to play a little bit. Look at the time of possession. Time of possession more than doubled. Five-man rush, the blitz. Pass is incomplete, intended for Urban. As we talked about those Cowboys draft choices, and they have indeed hit the jackpot. In 1991, look at what they'll have. Three first-round draft choices. Dallas, their own, Minnesota, and New Orleans, a second-round pick, eight selections overall in the first four rounds. In 1992, they hit the jackpot again. Two first-round picks, their own and the Vikings, three second-round picks, eight selections again in the fourth round. The question is, how are you going to pay all these first-round draft choices? They get about $29 million next year in TV money. Just to sign those three guys would take $20 million. You think there will be a trade or two? Pass over the middle. Irvin gave it the uh, alligator arms a little bit, and the pass is incomplete. No reason to, to get yourself killed. But I, again, I think the ball was a little bit behind him. You know, you talk about the draft choices. It isn't that Jimmy Johnson's going to go out and get people with those draft choices as far as rookies go. Because right now he's got he's upgraded the talent. What I think he's going to have to do is he's going to be the Monty Hall of the next year's next couple years trip. He's got a chance to trade for some people who can help his football team. They obviously need a corner. I think they need a big pass rusher, probably an offensive lineman, maybe a speed wide receiver who can play. Griffin on the punt across the 30 to the 32 yard line, a return of six after a 39 yard punt. And Steve Young will come in to play quarterback for the 49ers and Joe Montana will finish another brilliant evening watching Young mop up in the final 238. Montana, 27 out of 37, 290 yards, and every big play you needed, he got. Well, when he had to, they weren't necessarily long yardage plays, but the touchdown, the scramble around, get yourself open, the catch by Rice, it's vintage Montana. You saw the stats on Young. He hasn't thrown a pass in 11 months. Rathman. Nice block by Wallace and a nice move by Rathman. And Harris Barton is going to be slow getting up for the 49ers. You think Tom Rathman just buries his helmet into people's faces? Well, that's it. A little bit of high hurdle. Hey, I can get up. Look at that. Unbelievable. Great effort. Clock going down to the two-minute warning. Montana, Steve Bono, the third quarterback. 49ers, one of the few football teams that carry three quarterbacks active. Two-minute warning in Dallas. The 49ers continue to lead by 18. We'll be back in a moment. Bob, thanks very much. And, of course, coming up right after our game, it is Sports Center. Bob Lee and Dan Patrick will be along. All the sports news of the day, the plays of the week. We'll have a conversation with Bo Jackson. And right after Sports Center, it's prime time with a complete wrap-up of all the NFL action. Harry Sidney in gets the carry. 
picks up a couple across the 40. Clock running. Dallas uh, showing no signs of wanting to stop it, which I think is a good move. Yeah, it's an intelligent move. What the Cowboys did is they played a conservative football game. Really, what I think this year is it's an extension of training camp. They're really finding out who can play, who to keep. They're not putting themselves in bad situations, but they're going to have to open up if they want to win football games. They can't play it just close to the vest and hope to beat people. Sydney again with a nice cut back as the first down gets out to the 48-yard line. Of course, we've had the Goodyear Blimp America with us all night. It's out of Spring, Texas, and the pilot out of Anson, Texas, is Don McDuff. And we thank them for joining us tonight. Beautiful night to fly over Dallas. Clear, cool. Great day for golf. Great day for football. Great night for football. <laughs> San Francisco 24, Dallas 6, 43 seconds left. Cowboys continue to learn, and the Niners continue to roll. Sydney again, same play. Gets the midfield. This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League and intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use without the express written consent of the National Football League is prohibited. George Seifert gets his 16th straight, or make it 17th straight victory. The ninth straight this year. The Giants and the 49ers, the only undefeated teams in the league. They will play December 3rd, and if they both stay undefeated, what a collision that could be. As they step, you know, each game takes them one step closer, and they've got to start looking to it now. I think what we saw tonight is we saw the 49ers need a wake-up call. They got it after the fumble. The Cowboys, if they're going to win football games, they got to come out of this shell. I know Dave Shula wants to keep it close, but he's got to open up. Once again, our final score, San Francisco 24, Dallas 6. For Joe Theismann and our entire ESPN crew, this is Mike Patrick. Good night from Dallas, Texas.